Greetings, saints. I love the book of Isaiah. I know I've been doing, um, going through Jeremiah in the last several videos, but I've also been going through Isaiah, or was led to go through Isaiah, chapter 49 in particular, we're going we're gonna to begin looking at today in our, uh, one of our home fellowships. And some things led to that that have to do with looking at those being called to come unto Jesus, to follow him, and then to save nations. And I know I've said in the past as well, I think you can find almost the entire book of Revelation just in the book of Isaiah, in the prophecies. And so we're going to touch on a few of these today. And this is marvelous stuff. I believe God is revealing some things in our day, at least to me, and I'm seeing how so many passages in the Old Testament tie together and also tie to the new, to the parables of Jesus concerning the coming kingdom and what we see revealed in the book of Revelation. So I'm going to start in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1. It says, Listen, O coastlands, to me, and take heed, you peoples from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the matrix, or inward parts of my mother, he has made mention of my name. And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand he has hidden me, and made me a polished shaft in the quiver, in his quiver he has hidden me. Praise your name. And the New King James, they have capitalized my name, me, my mother, as it's referring to Messiah and Jesus, and I believe these refer to Jesus as well. But, friends, I want us to really look at this. I believe, and those of you who know me, I view Messiah as being head and the body. With the Christ Jesus has been perfected, the head of the body, the head of Messiah. But the body is being perfected as well. Throughout the millennia, the last 2,000 years, Christ is being perfected. Jesus is is incomplete without his body as the Messiah. Praise your name. So I believe these passages refer first to Jesus, but then also to his body. He's made mention of me from my mother's womb. Referring, I believe, he knew us from the foundation of the world. And we're going to look at that in a second. But one other thing here. He's hidden me. In his quiver, he's hidden me. And when I was reading this passage, almost immediately came to mind Revelation chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. Let's look at this. The dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Her child was caught up to God and to his throne. We're going to look a little bit deeper into this. But I believe this represents those who are in the assemblies that God has called to come unto Jesus, to follow him. And when that spirit of Christ that is born within them is caught up to the throne of God, hidden away in his quiver. We're here on earth. We're walking this walk now. And we're waiting, remember it says, it says in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, we're waiting to be clothed with that which is our heavenly tent, that which is being formed in the heavens now, in correlation to how we're behaving upon this earth. We're forming our own resurrection, as old brother Thompson used to teach. And also, Ephesians chapter 2, I believe, shows us this. It says that we're, we were raised up together and made to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So I believe... What we see in Revelation is those who, in whom Christ is being formed, has the seed has been planted there, that part of them, that spiritual nature of ours, has been caught up to the throne of God, hidden away with him, until, that, until the ages to come, when the sons of God are revealed, for those who have walked worthy in this life, and receive now that which they formed in the heavens, upon their physical frame, when the, rel when the realms converge. I could go so deep into this, friends. Praise your name. But I believe that this is a prophecy concerning that, even back in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 2. In the shadow of his hand he has hidden me. In his quiver he has hidden me. 
one day to be revealed. And there's things with the sharp sword. We see that coming from the mouth of Messiah, even in the book of Hebrews. Praise your name. Uh, let's move on to verse 3. And he said to me, You are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Again, Israel. Israel represents Christ, head and body. We see the Israel of God that Paul mentions in Galatians. I forget which chapter. I'll put it on the board. There's an Israel of God. And there are those who are grafted in to Israel, into the household of God. It's not necessarily by blood lineage. And we see that. Even Paul says, all who are of Israel are not Israel. Those who have the faith of Abraham are Abraham's seed. Again, this is, I could go so, so deep on this. I want to stay <clears throat> as focused as I can looking at Isaiah chapter 49 and then verses that tie into that. Some of the stuff we're going to touch on perhaps coming up. If you have a question on this or an insight on this, friends, please write to me. Put it in the comments below. Call me if you know me. Let's discuss these things. I believe that God is making known, again, at least to me, things from the Old Testament, particularly the book of Isaiah and, and Jeremiah as well, things concerning the coming kingdom of God, prophecies that were given in the Old Testament that began to be revealed in the New and are continuing to be unveiled in our day. Praise your name. The Israel of God. You are my servant in whom I will be glorified. Remember, God doesn't give his glory to another, but he's giving it to Christ, head and body. He's giving it to Israel so that his glory may be manifest to creation. Praise your name. Praise your name. And again, yes, verse uh, Galatians chapter 3. There is neither Jew nor Greek, Slave nor free, male nor female, you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ's, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And that promise that was given to Jesus is that God would be glorified in him. And Jesus wants us to share in his glory. Those, the elect of God, who walk worthy, he wants to share his glory with. And the nations will see that. They will see the glory of God in Christ in that day. Praise your name. Praise your name. Jesus' whole purpose upon this earth was to do the Father's will, to be established as the cornerstone, to set creation free, and that the Father's glory would be revealed. This is what he said. We look at, at John chapter 12. Uh, and this is when some of the Greeks were coming to him. And Jesus, the, the physical man Jesus, was struggling, knowing that the hour had come for him to take on the sins of the world, to be crucified, to go through all that agony that he would on the, on the cross, and even be separated from the Father for a time, that he might be raised up from the dead. But he struggled with this, friends. And he says in John chapter 12, uh, verse 27, Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father... Save me from this hour? But for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Again, Jesus was always looking to the Father. His desire was that his Father, God, would be glorified in the earth. That his will would be done. And God said he had glorified it and will glorify it again. And I believe he glorified it in Christ Jesus, in the things that he accomplished, finishing the work that the Father had given him to do, all the way to the cross, obedient to death, even the death of the cross, so that the Father would raise him up. And the Father is going to glorify his name again in that day when the saints are raised and united to Jesus. Praise your name. Uh, in the next chapter, at the Last Supper, after Judas had gone out, so Judas missed out on all this. He missed out on the opportunity, or he was given the opportunity, but he missed out on the fulfillment of it because he loved the present world. He was enticed by money, and whatever led him astray, he left the fellowship, and he missed even these words of Jesus. So when he, Judas, had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified. 
and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, in Jesus, in the Son of Man, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. Once Judas had gone out, that sealed it. It was set in motion. The cross was now before him. And Jesus was not turning aside from that. He knew what was coming. He could have stopped Judas from going out. He said, well, do, or what you do, do quickly. Oh, praise your name. And God was glorified in Jesus because of his obedience to death, the death of the cross, submitting his will before him. And God will be glorified in the saints, in the body of Christ in that day. Praise your holy name. Praise your name. Um, I want to look at some stuff um, in, in the prior chapters in that, uh, in the, in that 40 section of Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah chapter 41, uh, verses 8 and 9. But you, Israel, are my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the descendants or seed of Abraham, my friend, you whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest regions and said to you, you are my servant, I have chosen you and have not cast you away. You know, let me continue to verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And this was true of Jesus as well. And this is going to be true of all that he has called to be his servant. He's going to be glorified in them. Again, the seed of Abraham. And we're the seed of Abraham if we have his faith and if we, are, if we belong to Christ, we are Abraham's seed. Oh, praise your name. I get so excited reading these passages. And I see the fulfillment in Jesus, but I see a future fulfillment in the sons of God. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That's what Jesus said to Mary concerning the disciples when he was raised. I ascend to my God, to their God, to my Father and their Father. Whew. If they would walk that overcoming life. Again, Judas missed out on that. Mary um, Magdalene went back to the eleven and told them the words of Jesus. Praise your name. You are Israel, my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Oh, Father, this is a magnificent calling. If you, we feel that God has called us to come after Jesus, and again, like I say many times, this is far beyond being saved. This is not talking about salvation. This is talking about the kingdom of God becoming one with Christ, in whom the Father will dwell for eternity to be a light to the saved nations. Praise your holy name. Isaiah 42. Isaiah 40, almost the entire Isaiah 42 talks about this. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my elect one in whom my soul delights. And this dead elect one right there, a chosen one, and you could find it several times, the same word in the Hebrews uses chosen ones, plural. We have the servant, we have the elect. The elect are those, I believe, who are united to Christ Jesus in that day. Praise your name. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Again, the goyim, the nations. This is the purpose of raising up Messiah, head and body to bring forth justice, light, healing to, to the nations. Praise your name. Thus says, this verse 5, Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread forth the earth and that which comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it, and spirit to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand Remember, I will uphold you. I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people, or as a covenant people, it says in other, other translations, as a light 
to the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another. But he gives it to Christ, to him, Jesus, Jesus first off. And remember, when Jesus was raised, in him now dwells all the fullness of God in bodily form. The glory of God dwells in him. The Father's not giving it to another. He's giving it to himself who is in Christ Jesus and will be in Christ, the body of Christ. Praise your name. Oh, this is magnificent. Praise your name. Isaiah chapter 43. Almost every chapter in, in uh, the Isaiah in the 40s ties in with what we're looking at here in 49. I could go through each chapter, and perhaps I will coming up, friends. I find so much life and promise and truth in, in the prophecies of Isaiah. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. Again, formed in the inward parts of our mother's womb. Formed in the inward parts of the womb of the woman, the church, religion. Formed that called by God to come unto Jesus, to be part of that servant, his servant, in whom he will be glorified. Oh, praise your name. One verse from Isaiah 45. This is speaking now of, of Cyrus, whom God used, a Gentile king, as, as, his, as his servant, as one who was anointed by him to conquer Bab Babylon, who had conquered Israel, and allow them to go back into the land to rebuild. Praise your name. And just, just one verse in here because it ties in. And why is he doing, why did he raise up Cyrus to bring, to, to allow Israel to go back into the land? And he said, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect. Praise your name. Uh, chapter 46, uh, verse 13. I will bring my righteousness near. It shall not be far off. My salvation shall not linger, and I will place salvation in Zion for Israel, my glory. Again, glorified in Israel. Salvation will be found in Zion. That is God's resting place. In many places, Zion is mentioned as the place in which God dwells or will dwell. And from Zion, from Mount Zion, deliverers, saviors come to judge the mountains of Esau, which represents mankind. And we read that um, here in Isaiah 42. He will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Judgment is going to come. You'll judge men and you'll judge angels. The spirit realm, it says in uh, one of the Corinthians. These are those in whom the Father is dwelling in his fullness. In Jesus and those his brothers. Remember, he's the firstborn among many brethren. Praise your name. And they're going to bring forth judgment and justice, life and healing to the nations. Praise your name. And we see things in Romans chapter 8 that tie in with this as well. I, I love Romans 8. I've spent a lot of time um, in that chapter. And we see here, here's the thing about being glorified again. Um, he says, if we're children, then if we're children of God, then we're heirs. Heirs of God? and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. An heir of God. God was the inheritance of those, um, of the Levitical priesthood from the Old Testament that had no inheritance in the land. Their inheritance was God himself. And then they were to be those who ministered truth uh, in life, the teaching to the rest of the tribes of Israel and then to the nations. And I, I, this is the promise that I see. Joint heirs with Christ, Jesus. 
The promise is given to him, again, Psalm 2, the ends of the earth for his possession and the nations for his inheritance. That's the inheritance of the overcoming saints, of those who will be united with him. Remember John chapter 17, when those are become one with him, as he is one with the Father, and they, those joined to him as disciples, throughout the ages, are one with him as he is one with the Father, and they are dwelling in Christ and the Father, and the Father and the Son are dwelling in the saints. They're one. Unity says, so that the world will believe, or then the world will believe. That's the nation's friends. They're going to see in that day those sons of God that will be revealed for which creation now is groaning for, whether they know it or not. They're groaning for the revealing of the sons of God, the brothers of Christ. So that creation, the nations, will be set free into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Praise your name. Praise your name. This doesn't always seem real, friends. I was talking with another brother today. Belief is a choice. We have to choose to believe these things. I believe God is revealing them. If we have ears to hear, and God is opening up our understanding to comprehend what's in the scripture, it's now up to us. Are we going to believe this? Do we choose to believe this? With our carnal man, these things seem sometimes impossible. And especially if we're going through a hard time or a struggle, and it seems like this is all, this isn't going to happen. I, I've been doing all this following Christ for nothing. And we see that in the next verse here in chapter 49. Verse 4, he says, Then I said, I've labored in vain. I've spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my just reward or justice is with the Lord, and my work or recompense with my God. He's struggling with this. We see this in, in many of the prophets in the Old Testament, and even some in the New. I know Asaph in Psalm 73, he struggled. He said, I've, I've cleansed my, 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 my hands in vain. Like, I, I have done all this. I've been walking obediently, Lord. But yet, I'm struggling, and I see the wicked people in the world getting away with everything. He says, until I went into the sanctuary... And I saw the end, the end of the righteous and the wicked. When he went to spend time with the Father, it was revealed to him the truth. Praise your name. I know Paul in the New Testament, he said at one point, he said they did him and his companions despaired even of life. They were going to some hard things. Paul went, he was shipwrecked, beaten, everything else. There were times that his carnal man was beaten down. And when he had the affliction, he went to the Father. And he asked God to take it away from him. And God says, my grace is sufficient for you. And Paul said my, that his strength was made perfect in his weakness. So there's times when we can, when, when this seems so unreal, because of the things that we're facing in this life. Yet, yet even like Job said, though he slay me, yet I will trust him. Praise your name. Should we not accept adversity from God? And not just the good. Yet surely my reward is with my Lord. Looking at the promises. I'm going to choose to believe that what God has said is going to come to pass. Praise your name. And then verse 5 is reminiscent of what we read earlier. And now the Lord says, again, who formed me from the womb to be his servant. That's predestination. From the, from the foundation of the earth. Psalm 139, from the inward parts of my mother's womb, he formed me, and before one day had yet come to pass, he had, he had um, predestined those days for me, before one of them had come to pass. And we have to choose to walk that path. We may make mistakes. If he has predestined us, he's going to give us what we need to guide us back until we just walk away. Choose to turn back to the things of the world or allow the temptations of life to get us off. But this again has to do with predestination, which has nothing to do with being saved or lost. This has to do with those called to be conformed into the image of the firstborn Son of God. Praise your name. 
We see that in, uh, in Ephesians chapter 1. And again, the epistles were written to those who were already saved. It was written to the saints, those called to belong to Christ Jesus. Um, Paul writes Ephesians, in fact, he says, uh, to the saints who are in Ephesus and, to, and faithful in Christ Jesus. And again, I believe this is throughout the ages. If we're reading these things now, those that were called and are remaining faithful, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Again, remember, we were caught up, hidden away in God's quiver, caught up to the throne of God in Christ Jesus. It says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Christ Jesus to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the Beloved. Again, called us to belong to Christ Jesus from the foundation of the earth, predestined us that we should be holy and without blame, Remember, we're walking out our salvation with fear and trembling. This is not just being saved as the world looks at it. This is one who is going to become salvation, clothed with salvation. Praise your name. Praise your holy name. From the foundation of the world. You know, like we know in Ephesians 2.10, so we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. It's not a lock. Predestination is not a lock. He has things for us. He has set the path before us. He's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's even given us the faith. But now we add to our faith these things to make our calling and election sure, as it says in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. Praise your name. Those who are faithful, Remember, it's the called, the chosen, and the faithful that appear with him in that day. Praise your name. So he's called us to be faithful. He's called us to good works. But is that the end in and of itself? Or is there a reason why he's called us to these things? And I think we see that as we continue in chapter 49. Praise your name. Verse 5. He's chosen us in Christ. He's called us to bring Jacob back to him so that Israel's gathered to him. For I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Lord and my God shall be my strength. Again, this is Christ. Head and body in whom the Lord God is glorified because he's gathered Israel to him. Remember, um, Revelation from every tribe, tongue, and nation. He's called us to be priests and kings unto him. Praise your name. Grafted in to the Israel of God. And there's this point where it says in Romans chapter 11, when all Israel shall be saved. This has to do with first fruits. There's another topic we could get off on. But just looking at it from this point right now, that God has called some from the foundation of the world. And if you believe, or if we sense that calling, friends, this is what we enter into. And we look and see, what does he require of those that he's called to come after Jesus? Remember Luke 9, 23, to deny ourselves, to pick up our cross daily and follow him. Praise your name. That we might be united to Christ and that God will be glorified in us. That we would retain to the promises of Revelation 2 and 3, and have authority over the nations to bring life to them. Praise your name. And he says that in verse, we see the shades of this in verse 6 here. Indeed, he says, It is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved ones of Israel. He says that's initially the purpose, but there's more to that purpose, friends. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles, the nations, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. 
Oh, Father, this, this is glorious, that we would be his salvation to the ends of the earth, to bring salvation to the nations, clothed with salvation. Isaiah, I mean, um, Psalm 132, what we see at the, at the last few chapters of the book of Revelation, the promises given to those who multiplied the, um, the talents or mina that the, that the master gave to his servants, was to have authority over cities, to rule over nations, to be given charge over all the works of God's hands. Oh, Father God, because the promises in Psalm 8, repeated in Hebrews, um, I think it's chapter 1, someplace in, perhaps chapter 2, were given to man to have authority over all the works of God's hands, beginning with the risen man, Son of Man, the Lord Jesus, in whom the Father is now dwelling in His fullness, but also to His body, to the wife of the Lamb, those who will be united with Him in that day, raised as He is. Oh, Jesus. Verse 7, Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to Him whom man despises, to Him whom the nation abhors, to the servant of rulers, Oh, Father, despised one. And we see in Isaiah 53 concerning the Messiah that he was despised. He was abhorred by the nations. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. And we did not esteem him. To him who man despises, to him whom the nation abhors. Praise your name. The Holy One of Israel. I know it says earlier in Isaiah, and he's speaking again to his people. They say, to tell us smooth things. Don't tell us about the Holy One of Israel. Man doesn't like things being required of him. We want the easy way. Those who make the choice to respond to the call of God upon their lives, to deny themselves, pick up the cross and follow after Jesus. They're going to stand out. They're going to be looked upon by the church because of, their con because of being convicted. They're going to stand against them. I know Jesus warned his disciples. He says, you're going to be hated by all for my name's sake. And he says, there's coming a time when they're going to haul you before magistrates and authorities and rulers. And he says, they're going to put some of you to death thinking they're doing God's service. We know Jesus said it's going to create division in homes between, between family members. The man's um, enemies would be the members of his own household. Despised. Why? Because they're standing up for righteousness and holiness and obedience to God. Praise your holy name. But yet, called to be the servant of rulers. Jesus was the king of kings. I believe that refers to those who will rule with him. But he began as, as their servant. And he says to his disciples, he says, if you would be great, you must become the servant of all. But friends, the promise to be a servant to God, a servant to man, is to have the fullness of God dwelling in us. Praise your name. Ruling over the nations, even with a rod of iron, but serving them, bringing healing and life to them. Praise your name. Oh, Jesus. Praise your name, Lord. And kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship. Because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. Speaking again of Jesus, but also the body. This, I believe, is the fullness of Messiah. Kings will see and, ar and arise. They're gonna, princes will worship before him. When? When he is seen in Messiah. Because he has chosen them, they've been revealed. We see that in Isaiah chapter 60, the first couple um, verses of Isaiah 60. The whole chapter 60 is, is wonderful. Verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. 
For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. This is the rising, the, uh, the revelation of the sons of God, the revealing of the sons of God. When Jesus comes back, and his body is united to him, and the glory of the Lord is seen in them, the nations will be drawn to that. They will arise. They shall come and worship before him, because the glory of God, the Holy One of Israel, is in those whom he has chosen. Oh, Jesus, praise your name. Well, friends, there's a lot that we could go into now, so I'm going to stop right now. I pray you'll take the verses that we read from Isaiah 49 and others, study them, meditate upon them, see what the Lord would speak to you through them. And we're going to get into this in the next time. I'll probably reread um, verse, verse 7 and then Isaiah 60, because there's a whole bunch that ties to that. And so many other promises of Scripture from both Testaments that confirm this, that the glory of the Lord the Father will be seen in Messiah, and the nations will be drawn to that in eternity. Praise your name, Lord. Bless the saints, Father God. Help us to understand and comprehend the scripture as Jesus reveals himself to each one of us personally. Jesus, you said for this purpose you came, for this hour, to be that the Father would be glorified in you. You would be established as the cornerstone upon whom living stones would be added. And the temple of God would be built in whom the Father will dwell so that the nations will see that, be drawn to it. Praise your name. Be glorified, Lord, in each heart and each home. And we love you. We need you. Amen.